Sign up to The Economist for in-depth curated expert analysis of world events and topics ranging from business and culture to science and technology. You'll get the weekly digital edition, online-only articles, curated newsletters on politics, the markets, science, culture and China, and full access to The Economist Podcast Plus. The Economist is independent journalism for independent thinking. Go to economist.com and get your first month free. Today on CityCast Madison. Navigating a new city is an adventure, and it can be daunting. Where do you go? What do you see? In general, life's easier with a good guy. So we set out to make one for all Madisonians, from the born and bred to the fresh-faced newbies. We're calling this endeavor Must See Madison. And to kick us off, we asked you for your ideas on where our new producer, Phil Circus, should go in Madison as a new resident. And you understood the assignment. Dozens of you sent in local suggestions. And Phil's been busy hitting the town. I sat down with him and our executive producer, Haley Sperling, to get the word on how it's been going. It's Tuesday, June 4th. I'm Bianca Martin, and here's what Madison's talking about. It is a mighty fine day in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm pretty stoked to talk about our topic today. We understand that our community contains multitudes. That is, we're made up of longtime Madisonians, born and raised here, as well as us middle ground folks, maybe came here for school, and a growing number of residents who are relatively new to the area. And one of those such people, a newbie, is CityCast producer Phil Circus. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here. Phil, and we have this newbie in our midst, in our ecosystem, joining our team, joining our work fam. And to get Phil up to speed with what's about town, what our town is about, we were like, let's present a human experiment of the highest order. We had Haley Sperling. Hello. Hey, Haley. We had Haley ask you, the beautiful readers of Madison Minutes, hopefully you all are readers of Madison Minutes and are subscribed to our newsletter. If not, you can pause and go subscribe right now. We have asked you to suggest things to Phil on things he should do to get to know our city. And frankly, the response was rude. You outdid (laughs) yourselves. And by rude, I mean superb. Y'all came through and you continue to humble us. Thank you so, so much. Um, You sent in so many options for Phil to try and knock out. Phil Circus, how do you feel? I feel good. I feel good. I'm happy to be here with you, Bianca, and you, Haley. And I have to thank all the readers who suggested things, the readers of Madison Minutes, because, oh my goodness, you're getting me out of the house. And I really appreciate it because we work hard to bring you the podcast, but I needed to find out what was happening in Madison. And the top of mind, one of the things that was just so amazing was Picnic Point. So I want to give a shout out to Susie V, who suggested that I walk at Picnic Point and Second Point. Are you all familiar with Second Point? Because I hear people talking about Picnic Point, but do you know what Second Point is? I'm actually kind of confused. No, Phil, tell me what is Second Point? It's just like you walk a while and you get to a second point and there's a sign. I don't know. I don't know. But it's known as Picnic Point. There's a second point at Picnic Point? Yes. There's all kinds of points there. And that's what was surprising to me. It's not just Picnic Point. There's now, I might get names wrong because as you pointed out, and I'm going to play that card during this episode, I'm new. There's (laughs) Frouchy Point. Does that sound like a real name? That does sound like a real name. Okay. (laughs) Like, that doesn't actually give you that much information. Yes, it does sound like a real name. No, I have heard of it before. (laughs) Okay. All right. You can do that. You can turn me around, but I'll still, uh, I'm going to highly recommend to everyone. I mean, I'm just so thrilled to go there. So I went there with my wife, Jen, and our dog, Marty. And right away, we knew, like, whoever's going to visit us in Madison, this is the first place we're going to take them. So this, this was so cool. We walked out onto the peninsula which is about a mile long on Lake Mendota. And I was walking my dog, Marty, and we came across this couple who stopped us to say hello to our dog. And then she told me a story. 
She said she was walking. Was it by the fireside? It was on that strip because there's about, I don't know, four or five uh, fire pits there. Yeah, six. Six fire pits. And uh, some were in use, adding a lovely fiery perfume to the air. I loved it so much. Gave me camp vibes. So I don't even know if this is a story, but this woman just told me she was walking her four bloodhounds. And then the leash broke, and then they all went in different directions. That's the end of the story. But it was a great oh visual, and I loved it. They all got out, like, that day? Like, like for some, the, something snapped on her leash, and then, like, all of a sudden, four bloodhounds were free. of. They were not tethered. And they each, because they have strong prey drives, just like my dog, went in different directions. Wow. That's insane. Um, <laughs> but also, thankfully, hopefully she got him back, right? <laughs> um, we didn't get that far, but it was just a friendly story. And I want to point out lots of friendly stories one can get walking around places like Picnic Point. I find Madisonians to be very friendly, very generous with their with their storytelling. I am so glad that you started with Picnic Point. I feel like there's no better place. It's my favorite place in Madison. Is it? It's my like, okay, I need peace and grounding. I know where I'm going to go. Picnic Point. It is so gorgeous. I, I looked it up. The Picnic Point Trail is basically as like around a mile. It's two miles long. And I have gone there and made friends with many a tree. They have the best trees there. They have the best trees. I feel like Christopher Robin or Winnie the Pew, Pew Winnie the Pew, it's extremely serene. And the wildlife is very intentionally preserved and protected there. So it's like you, you get all of the noises and like the smells that you said, like it is a full immersive nature experience. I'm literally experiencing it right now. <laughs> it's like, go to your happy place. It was gorgeous. We saw some wildlife. Uh, another person called us over to take a look at a deer. I think there was a fawn in the woods. And then we had just walked by a, a big turkey. And so we said to this person, we just saw a big turkey. And then she said to us, is it your first time here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The yeah they're, like, they're abundant. The turkey is low on the, t- on the totem pole. It was gorgeous. It was so picturesque. It was delightful. So. You know, if I had to give a rating, uh, kind of devised a rating system for these new things I'm trying. It's a three-tier system with the first tier is this feels familiar. Maybe something it felt like I've done before. Another tier is, uh, hey, I'm pleasantly surprised. This is actually pretty good. And I'm going to give Picnic Point my top rating, which is Madison. Where have you been all my life? And that is the rating it deserves, no less. Like, truly. Like Bianca said, Picnic Point is such a place that I go to refresh and reset. And it's so nice that it's just, like, super accessible to people in the Madison area, right? You know, like, it's not far away from downtown. I feel disconnected from the hectic hustle and bustle of the the big city, quote unquote, but also like very connected to nature and all of the beautiful creatures that we have in our lakes and rivers. And yeah, Bianca, like you mentioned, they do such a great job preserving the area. There's like effigy mounds in that area. Like there's a lot of really beautiful and sort of like hidden places. Um, You mentioned the Frouchy Point, Phil. It actually Mm -hmm. turns out, so that's like the northernmost parcel of the picnic point preserve and something that's exciting that's happening in the near future is that the university is going to be opening up a new sustainable visitor and education center at picnic point um and that is all thanks to a very generous gift of 14.3 million dollars from oh the frouchy family Thank you, Um, Frouchies. Thank you. Yes. So it's really cool. Their family, as it turns out, has lived in Madison since the 1800s. And when like making this donation, he said, quote, we feel a great sense of responsibility to give back to the city and community we love. We're excited that visitors will have a welcoming gathering place with improved access to the trail line and Lakeshore. Because I think that is kind of the one thing that picnic point was missing right was some sort of like a welcome center because you get there and it's like there's a parking lot and then you kind of walk in and like that's it you know which it deserves the highest rating like i said it's beautiful and it's great but i think having some sort of center where like people can say like we're meeting here and we're going here and just a place where people can be a little bit more like 
cognizant about the land that they're on and learning more about, you know, what's in our area. I think it's super cool. So I'm super excited for that to happen. That was just announced this year. And of course, it's going to it's going to take a while to get going. But um, yeah, we love Picnic Point. That center, it's scheduled to open in 2026. So we've got some time. But we're moving on. Phil, you've you've done a lot more. Where else did you go? Well, after Picnic Point, guess what? You get hungry. You get a little hungry. That's a walk. That's a serious walk. So true. So I want to thank Tammy B, who suggested that I eat chorizo hash at Monona Bakery, an eatery on Monona Drive, which is in um, Monona or Madison. That whole thing, that whole thing about the inverb, still confusing to me. (laughs) The inverb. (laughs) So we went to Monona Bakery and we got a little bit more than just the chorizo hash, which was excellent. This place is a family-owned Honduran restaurant that opened in 2017. And I was kind of surprised because it really had kind of like a, a well-oiled machine vibe. And that is that is a good number of years. It felt like an institution that was probably there for decades. Um, and we, we grabbed a table outside. This place is open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every single day except for Tuesday. So like lots of opportunities to eat chorizo hash. Yes. Very good. And... What can I say? We had the chorizo hash. We had something called the... Baleada. And you know, I'm just going to tell the listeners right now, I can't pronounce these things. So if I I insert my wife, Jen, saying these things, the proper pronunciation, you might hear that. It might be disconcerting. (laughs) Um, But we have this dish made of uh, homemade flour tortillas filled with refried beans, scrambled eggs, avocado cheese, and Honduran cream. And that was heaven. It was the perfect thing to have. After that hike, and I just have to point out at this juncture that I came to Madison, um, a vegan. <laughs> it was like us waiting for it, <laughs> like chorizo hash, huh? <laughs> Madison, what have you done to me? Uh, I, I tried to, I tried to have, I don't know what I needed, some willpower, something. I tried boundaries with meat. I don't know, they're gone now. No more boundaries <laughs> with meat or dairy. You needed the chorizo hash. You needed that Honduran cream. (laughs) You needed those scrambled eggs. You needed the cheese. I needed, man. I was just like, I was in a moment. uh, It was a great suggestion. And I went for it. And I didn't think about it. And next thing you know, we had an incredible, delicious meal that I rate. Madison, where have you been all my life? It was so good. Hey, this this one. I mean, shout out to Monona, right? Like Madison's little hidden gem, like our little kid sister, right? Monona <laughs> just kind of out there doing the best. Um, she really can't fail. <laughs> What's crazy is that it's called Monona Bakery. And it's yeah. like, it's it's such a, is that what you're about to say, Phil, to talk about the name? Because it's like, you'd think it's just like, oh, it's the, the Monona Bakery. And then it's like, Actually, it has literally everything. It is a Honduran restaurant. And I freaked out. I was like, wait, pupusas? And so I went actually not that long before you had gone, Phil. And I 100% agree. This is a gem. The menu goes on for days. The menu goes on for days. It's a a It's a tome. It's the war and peace of menus. It's It's the war and peace. And and actually, like, my favorite menu item right now, outside of uh, the La Roca pupusa, which is um, a pupusa with pickles in it, which, hey, is like an avocado pear chicken salad. Like, Mm, they have, and then they've got, like, flan. I mean, they they just have, like, literally everything. Oh, my goodness. And the baked goods are amazing. And That was just a feast. So thank you again, Tammy B. That was a top-notch suggestion. And Tammy B, you are not responsible. Is that Tammy Baldwin? (laughs) I can't hear Tammy B and not think Tammy Baldwin. Did you write us? (laughs) Whichever Tammy you are, you are not responsible for me um, falling off or on the wagon, depending on your perspective. (laughs) <laughs> we welcome all of Phil's non-vegan adventures, truly. Like, where can we get him to dive into, like, the biggest vat of melted cheese? That's what I want to <laughs> know next. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, but Bianca, oh, my goodness, you were there. And that whole area is a little, it's a gem of wonderful restaurants in that little, like, two plaza area. It truly, truly is. Viet Hoa, that place is... Incredible. I'm trying. I'm trying to find words that I don't. I the words I normally say are are not family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Viet Hoa is hot and spicy. We could say that. That's the isn't that the name of the restaurant that's in the back? And they yeah. they they do just like really proper Asian American food, and then has this restaurant inside of it. And I've been more than a couple times. Amazing place. And there's also a Peruvian restaurant, Mishki, in that same that plaza. I haven't been to yet, but it's right on the list. Yeah, I have. And I, I got the rotisserie chicken. Yeah, no longer. Haley's a throwing vegan. your hands in there. What? <laughs> <laughs> he like really, y'all. He really took this assignment like for real, for real. He's like got his bike out, like he was. I mean, <laughs> hit the city. I'm new to town, and these are all great suggestions. I have no reason to believe that any of you would steer me wrong. So th- thank you. Oh, I should mention Monona Bakery. So nice. The person who who took our order, um, he looked like a teenage Michael Imperioli. So. If you want to see something like that, go to the Monona Bakery. And that's my favorite fact. That's all I need. I am sold. Give me baby Michael Imperioli. I will take him home with me. I'll take three of him, please. (laughs) Y'all. There is a truly special opportunity coming this month. The Harry Whitehorse International Wood Sculpture Festival is running from June 14th through the 22nd. And it's a first of its kind week-long celebration of contemporary and traditional wood sculpture and indigenous culture. It's named after the world-renowned Ho-Chunk sculptor and painter who lived in Monona, the late Harry Whitehorse. And it will be hosted at the iconic San Damiano Park, right on the shores of Lake Monona. The fest is inviting 12 international sculptors from countries like Peru, Germany, Ukraine, and more for a week-long artisan residence. And it will host demonstrations of live sculpture and Ho-Chunk arts and crafts, such as black ash basketry, porcupine quill art, and finger weaving. Plus, they've got live music and food. Plan your visit and learn more at harrywhitehorse.com slash festival. Kids are our future, right? And we all want to make sure that future is bright. That's why making sure that their bodies, minds, and characters are strong. Luckily, Kid Strong coming to Sun Prairie might just be the answer. Kid Strong is a national franchise that uses a science-based training program that focuses on character, physical, and brain development through weekly 45-minute age-based classes. And a pair of Sun Prairie parents are opening a new Kid Strong location at Prairie Lake Shopping Center. Instruction is led by world-class certified coaches, and kids are taught everything from the importance of shaking hands to how to do a pull-up correctly. And 77% of parents in the program credit KidStrong with boosting their children's self-confidence. Interested? You can call or text 608-369-8866 or visit their social media at KidStrong Sun Prairie to learn more. The program opens in the next few weeks, and you can save money by registering today. You know, going back to the Via Hoa, like, you know that a place is going to be good when it's like a grocery store and a restaurant, right? Oh, yes. Like they're yes. they're getting their ingredients straight from the source and it's going to be fresh and it's going to be authentic and it's going to be amazing. And Bianca, I think you told me a story about like how their ramen made you cry. They made my <laughs> boyfriend actually implode. So if you are a spicy uh, and I just got medium, I didn't go all the way. I just oh, got wow. the medium <laughs> and I was eating it. I thought I was doing a nice thing for me and my partner, you know, bringing food. And I looked over at him and I've never seen his eyes. He was, he was <laughs> needed to be hospitalized. I'm, oh, I, no. He didn't actually need to be hospitalized, but he was just tears dripping down his face. Like he really I'm like, you don't have to keep beating it. He's like, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. That's how, you know, these places, they're authentic and they're not messing around. And uh, if you're not in it for the spice, like, don't be afraid to go light. I mean, I am such a, I love a little spice, but like emphasis on a little spice. So I'm right there. Yeah. With you. <laughs> they can, they can do the real deal um, and everything in between. And I end up getting, um, while I was waiting, groceries for a really beautiful yogi tea. And I got, um, mm, lemongrass cool. and I got ginger and turmeric and I got to do some some grocery shopping there so it's like a two fur for sure also for one of the things sure. that this sparks for me like talking about this strip that's got Viet Hoa it's got the Peruvian place you're talking mm-hmm. about Monona Bakery with the Honduran food 
I've heard complaints from people and you, y'all listen, you listening to let us know and w- weigh in. It's like when people move here from different cities, they miss the international cuisine. We have international cuisine here and people I know that are chefs or whatever, like there are a few spots that are like, this makes me feel like I live in a bigger city. Like, and Phil, did you kind of had that response like, oh, OK, you know, because you came from Oakland. In the I, Bay I did Area. come from <laughs> Oakland. In fact, we did get someone who wrote in Charles W. who said, uh, I come from California, too, and you're probably going to miss Mexican food. But it was two days ago. I ate at this place. Vaquero. What do you think? Vaquero. Yeah. Um, it was the real deal. It was a real taqueria. And we went overboard. But I have to say. It made me uh, not miss uh, the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area so much. It was really, really good. You know, I've had good food. I think what you're saying is absolutely right, Bianca. There is some good flavors in town more than just, you know, I know we're known, Madison is known for farm to table and meat and potatoes, farm to table. Almost rhymes, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> but there is uh, so many, there are so many restaurants here and it kind of blows my mind. And I will certainly be eating my way through Madison for years to come. That's the only way to years do to it. Come. And y'all listening, if, if you're like, no, you guys need to talk about this, email us at madison at citycast.fm. Um, let us know. Yeah, we are always taking suggestions. One place that I have been hearing all about recently is El Sabor de Puebla, which is over on 4th Street. So like right in my neck of the woods, that's also kind of like this hole in the wall place that's right behind Emilio's. I haven't been there, but I'm hoping to drag you two out there and we can we can report no. back on what we find. Because can we pause I would this love. recording and then just like come back? Yeah, and we'll, see we'll come back. <laughs> Bye, yeah, like, let's go. But Phil, I'm sure, you know, after eating all this meal and, you know, taking in the nature, you're going to want to like get a little exercise in though, aren't you? Yeah, after that one, two punch of like beautiful trees, nature, that one turkey, and then Monona, 10 pounds of food from Monona Bakery. That doesn't sound, it was so good. It was so good. Um, I needed to move my body. And more than one person has suggested the Monona bike loop as something to do in town. Like a sure. lot of people have made the suggestion. So to put air in my tire, shout out to Madison Bike Week, though. Oh, my gosh. In, in case you need air in your tires, it's the best time of the year to get air in your tires. I put air in my tires and and I set off and I did the entire 13 mile bike loop. Yay. I think if you are beginner or intermediate, no matter where you are, it is a really super fun loop with very little changes in the grid, like very, very few hills. There's a couple times when you have to like crank your pedals a little bit. And then the next thing you know, you're like going down another hill. It's gently rolling. I have a new assignment for us. Can we go hit the Monona Lake Loop and get sound and talk to people? I feel like that'd be really fun. I think we can. Okay. I didn't s- stop at, um, is it called the Bait and Tackle Shop or something? With yeah. That- yes, yes. Um, <laughs> we talked to them. Yeah, they have the fishing report. <laughs> Did each you? Year. <laughs> okay. All right. Then we have to drop that episode. Um, we need to stop there. We need to go on our CityCast Madison team Monona Loop crawl. I'm so in. I love it. Great signage. Gorgeous. And it was on a Saturday afternoon and it what didn't feel crowded, which I'm so impressed always with Madison, how I don't see traffic or crowds and I can always park in front of wherever I go. It's amazing. Yeah, but you're like a little lucky. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I mostly agree with you, but the parking right in front is like for a lucky duck. Maybe you're <laughs> unlucky. True. I don't know. I, that, well, that's what I'm in. I, I inferred that. <laughs> don't rub it in. <laughs> so I, okay, let me preface this by saying I love the Lake Loop. I love riding my bike in Madison. I do have somewhat of a hot take on the Lake Loop myself. Um, Let's hear it. Yeah, I'm, I'm laying it on you. Um, Myself growing up in Minneapolis, growing up in Minnesota, being the quite literal land o lakes, I was very much exposed to riding my bike, or especially me, I was a big rollerblader in my youth time. You know, so I 
I would always be rollerblading around the lakes. And I was really excited to come to Madison. And I never really took advantage of riding the lake loops until pretty recently. I really got into my biking era back in 2020, 2021, 2022. Like it was a real big pandemic pickup for me. And I was kind of surprised at how like little of the lake that you're actually like right by, right? You know, like it's, there's a lot of nice scenes. You are going through some beautiful neighborhoods, houses that I could only dream of, but like you're only like actually right next to the lake, which is what I envisioned for the entire thing. You're only like right next to the lake for maybe like five, 10 minutes, right? Yeah, I did think the same thing. I did think an alternate name for this bike loop was the loop of economic disparity. No, that's not, we can't have that. <laughs> oh, sh- can't. No, because there's a I lot mean, of big- drop go- it, Bill, drop it like it's hot. Oh, because there are a lot of nice homes where I was imagining, I bet the, I bet, I bet it looks nice from their backyard. That was in my mind. Yes. Yes. That said, that is so true. I 100% agree with you. It's still very pleasant roads, lots of trees. <laughs> <laughs> they should call it the tree loop, maybe. It's a nice tour of the neighborhoods, right? And yes. there's a, there are a couple places, too, um, where if you've done it a couple times and you'll you'll start to notice, like, okay, I can hop off my bike and, like, get closer to the lake. Like, there's a couple of piers out there where you can go on and, like, hang out. And sometimes I do that because I am not an avid cyclist. You know, I, I know how to ride a bike. Yes, I am not sprinting up any hills. So sometimes I need a break. And there's a lot Mm. of good places where you can actually, you know, hop off your bike, go down to a park, go down on a pier and like sit right by the lake. And that's nice. But yeah, it's um, don't let the name Lake Loop fool you. Like this is not a loop of a lake as I was used to back in Minneapolis. That for me was a that was a surprise. (laughs) Well, in five years from now, if I'm still here in Madison, I'll start a petition to rename the Lake Loop something, something. something. I don't know what. We'll take we'll take suggestions on that one too, Phil. What what would you give your give the Lake Loop rating? I'm going to say pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I feel like it was it was a little bait and switch, not bait and tackle shop, but a little bait and switch on the lake aspect. You know, I'm just wondering where the next bike ride, what the, what the next bike ride is. Well, let's ask our readers. You know, let's ask our listeners if you have a suggestion for a bike ride. A restaurant, an attraction, send it our way. We will drop the email in our show notes, but you can hit us up at madison at citycast.fm. And we'd love to hear from you. Where should Phil go next? Where should we go next? Send us out on an adventure. Forward slash no longer vegan. Hashtag cheese life. You had one of our famous sausages, I heard. Remember when how you said it the first time? How <laughs> you what you were calling them? Beer and uh <laughs> yes. Okay, Bianca's going to call me out. I said beer and brats. I love it. I love it, though. And then uh, I did, on a listener suggestion from Katie, I went to Cooper's Causeway in Stoughton. I'm kidding. Stoughton. Stoughton. I was about to be like, Phil. (laughs) Well, you did a lot. This is so fun. And we have to do more because there are literally more things on the list and, and send us more. Phil. Welcome to Madison. Thank you, Bianca. And thank you, everyone who wrote in. And Haley. Thank you. Good work, team. That's Phil Circus, our producer. And Haley Sperling, our executive producer. If you want to send us more suggestions, please do. This town is not going to just explore itself. Email us at madison at citycast.fm. And a huge thank you to everyone who wrote in suggestions for Must See Madison for Phil. Let's keep this fun going. And hey, we have another thank you in order. Thank you to all of you who nominated us in Madison Magazine's Best of Madison contest for this year. You did it. We are officially nominated in the categories for Best Local Podcast and Best Local Website for our newsletter, Madison Minutes. We're so humbled. We're overjoyed and we're grateful. And man, do y'all come through on helping us spread the word about our work. Thank you. And as of this weekend, dun, 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 the final round for voting is now officially open. So if you want to vote for us, best podcast and best local news website of 2024, you can today. If you got a quick minute and you got the love, please vote us best of Madison. And to note, unlike the first round where you could register votes daily, 
This time around, you can only vote once per category. So no need to wait. Head over to cast your votes today. We so appreciate it. And we'll drop a link to the voting website in our show notes. Live Live long long and and prosper. That's all for today here on CityCast Madison. I'm Bianca Martin. If you enjoyed the show, why not share this episode with somebody new in town? We'll be back tomorrow morning with more stories from around the city. Ciao.